Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are returning. Thank you for being here. Today I wanted to show you how I took an existing decor and took it from drab looking and made it over with some paint and some IOD stamps. I will be using Dixie Belle in the color Champagne Pink. This is a very pretty pale pink color. And then an ink pad in the color fern green this is um, by ranger and i'm also going to be using some iod stamps this is the la campagne if i'm pronouncing that correctly it's a two pack of stamps with really pretty designs like roosters chickens floral prints and designs and it's very french country this is going to be my first time using it so i'm excited to see how this turns out now going into this DIY, I wasn't really sure what look I was going for. I had different ideas going on in my head and different color combinations that I wanted to do. But ultimately, I decided to go with this really pale pink colored uh, paint color. And as you can tell just by the first coat that this is definitely pink, uh, pale. It's not bright. It's not like loud or in your face or anything like that, which is why I do really like this pink shade and I it did take a couple coats because I didn't sand this piece or anything like that so it already had like an existing paint finish so I did need to give this a good couple coats just to have full coverage now since I use a paintbrush and this I'm working with a bigger surface space it was really evident um, that all the brush strokes were visible so that was a bit of a bummer now in hindsight i'd probably use like a small roller brush or something um, for future if i'm working with more of a bigger space like this now if i was using um like a small project or doing a small project it wouldn't be as visible or noticeable but in this case here it did bug me a little bit but you know i'm i'm just gonna ro roll with it um, i also took a putty knife um, as the paint was drying and i decided to scrape off some paint here and there now i could have used a sandpaper or sanding sponge or sanding block to distress this piece but you know i decided to go this route just by using a putty knife you can uh, chip off some of the paint in different areas just giving it more of that rustic or distressed finish now if you are not into that look you can definitely skip over this step but i always favor that look because it does go well with any imperfections that i that may already exist within the diy and like i mentioned this has a lot of brush strokes and things like that so adding a little bit of chippiness and some distress look to it will definitely help to camouflage the imperfections which is why i really like distressing my my pieces so here i'm going to choose the different floral designs from the stamp pack i do like the roosters and stuff but just not for this project besides they were a little bit on the larger scale so i was trying to find floral designs or patterns that would fit mostly within the space that I had to work with. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of an overhang, which is fine because when you are stamping on any project piece, um, it's nice to have it hanging off the edges a little bit sometimes because it gives it more of like that organic feel where it makes the flowers or whatever design you're stamping on sort of hang or drape to the sides like it would naturally fall. So here I'm just making sure that I get the majority of the design onto the surface but not really caring whether some of it was cut off um, because if it sort of hung over the areas where there wasn't any surface to, to paint over or to stamp over I wasn't particularly concerned about that because I do like and I'm going for more of like that natural feel that natural flow so I'm just going to continue on with the steps just taking the different design from the stamp set that I'm using and just stamping over the different areas using that fern green ink pad. Now this ink pad 
did run a bit when I was trying to add the top coat to the finish, which you will see at the end. So I wasn't too happy with the fact that it was smearing. I thought that this was, it does say archival ink, so I thought that meant that once the paint was, or the ink was dry, that it would not run once you apply the top coat, but I was wrong. But you'll see that here shortly. So I continued on with stamping all of the designs, just making sure I sort of covered areas that, you know, not really leaving any big blank spaces. I could have left it with more of a minimal look. I was originally going to just stamp over about, I think, three three designs, but it was looking a little too plain for me, so I kept on going until I was happy. This uh, next step here, I'm going to use a different stamp. It's from Redesign. It's like their, their script. They have like different French typography and designs, and I just took the one with a lot of script and just randomly stamped them in between those floral patterns or floral designs just to add a little bit more interest and I really do like the um, the overall feel that this gave it definitely finished off the look I used the distress oxide in vintage photo for this stamp uh, with the typography and I thought that was very fitting and it was just a nice complement or contrast to the fern green of the of the floral designs so I really like the combination of these two colors and two styles of stamps. And this pretty much did it for this project. And here's a DIY top coat. It's called Big Top. This is the part where I start to smear the ink using a, a foam paintbrush. I went ahead and just dipped that into the Big Top and then just started to spread that across the... The designs and that's when I noticed like the ink started to run and smear and that's when I knew I had to stop the step. I tried to salvage it by dabbing off any of the ink that was smeared but you know there wasn't really much I can do in terms of the areas that sort of sort of bled through which was fine because it sort of blended with the floral pattern and that's when I decided that I needed to move on to a different a different process and that's when I decided that I'm going to use a spray polyurethane instead. I believe I used a Krylon polyurethane and I did this outdoors and then made sure to dry it really well and that was it. This is the finished look. <laughs> 